Hello, my name is Jasmine Jones. I'm a licensed clinical social worker and you are now watching Black Girl Therapists in the Wild. This is the little series I like to call Therapist Sips and Reviews. You're getting another random drop. I have no schedule for when I drop videos because my schedule is so hectic. I can't necessarily stick to a day. I've tried to stick to the weekends though, but this I wanted to do today because this movie came out today. Um, uh, I am going to be reviewing um, Fatal Affair with Nia Long and Omar Epps. We're getting some 90s spiciness in here. Um, I got some new wine. It is Risotta, Risotta Moscato Dosti. I think it's Dosti or Dosti. Dosti? Dosti. Dosti sounds better to me, so I'm just gonna, you know. Looks like it's a white wine, Moscato. I'm not a drinker, so don't come for me. <laughs> I have to say that in every video just because I feel like I post so many of these it might seem like I drink a lot, but I literally, this is like my one glass of wine. Well, I'll say because I'm gonna do this video, then I'm gonna do Pea Valley, and then I'm gonna do, um, I made a show you. So three glasses of wine a week isn't that bad, I don't think. <laughs> so anyways, this movie was, you know, it was like regular corny evil nigga movie. I mean, I don't know what else to say, but it was good. It was entertaining. It was messy entertaining. There you go. It was like watching a good Tyler Perry movie only with better hair and Nia Long. <laughs> Although I don't think, has she been in any Tyler Perry movies? So yeah, there you go. Um, let me see. The movie starts off with this woman and this man in the house and they're having sex and then the woman needs to go get water and all this other stuff and the woman goes and gets water and she comes back and the dude is dead and then all of a sudden she's dead so we start the show off the movie off with these two people dying later on we find out that that was his wife <laughs> and her boyfriend so then we get to Ellie. Well, first and foremost, I like to say that this movie, since I've been doing so many videos that focus on women being abused and surviving abuse and surviving rape, I feel like this movie is, an, is a little mix up where we focus on the actual abuser and people that have issues and hurt other people being in the center of the story. So let's start um we are starting off the movie with Nia Long she's playing Ellie and she's moving into a new home with her husband Marcus I'm remembering names y'all see this is this is good um she moves into a new home with her husband Marcus their daughter I don't know her name there you go there it's, it's starting um goes to Berkeley and so they're basically their child has left the nest and so they want to expand their horizons as far as where they decide to live um her husband has recently got into some kind of accident they don't tell us until towards the end of the movie but he's depressed because of his accident and Nia Long is trying to open up her own private practice she is a lawyer she works for a big firm in the city and she has decided that she would like to have her own small practice next to where she lives out in the ocean side you know it's an ocean side town I think it's called Ocean Crest in the movie mm-hmm mm -hmm. Leave there in California, hour away from Berkeley. So there you go. And her husband is, you know, going through the depressions of having his shoulder damn near sliced off. <laughs> That's, I mean, there's a long scar on his shoulder. It's, it's a lot. And so this is a point where I could say you, you need to ride or die with your partner when they're going through something. I mean, it's not like he is destroying their marriage because the fact that, you know, his shoulder was damn near sliced off. He was just sad and he wasn't having sex as much. And, you know, he was slowly but eventually he slowly worked his way back to healing he started to go back to work started to build up his career again so he figured it out he just needed support through figuring it out see there's the difference we go back to insecure lawrence was just was just jobless 
<laughs> and weighing the relationship down. And at that point, you have to, you know, you can only support so much when everything is on your shoulders as the other partner. Versus this guy, he just, you know, he got depressed. He had his shoulder down there sliced off. He got sad for a little bit. Work went to the wayside for a little bit. He wasn't having sex as much. But eventually, he got it together. That's the difference. <laughs> and it didn't take him years to get it together it took him a few months to figure things out and understand what he went through and learn to be okay with it he just wanted his wife to support him through that i feel like that is fair <laughs> but anyways so nia long is feeling some type of way because she doesn't know how to ask him what's wrong <laughs> ask him if he's okay ask him tell him that she feels unsatisfied with the fact that they're not having sex and wondering if in what way she can support him so that they can you know build their relationship back up from this point of trauma for him so she doesn't know how to talk to him she just feels dissatisfied which happens it happens it's not abnormal men do it women do it non-binary folks do it people do it they get unsatisfied they don't know how to talk about their feelings and so they end up doing stupid shit <laughs> it happens so this isn't gonna be like oh well she shouldn't have did this and no because everybody does it <laughs> everybody makes mistakes and does stupid shit okay so she is has one last case at her big firm that she's working at in the city once she's done with this case, she will be moving fully to Ocean Crest and opening up her practice. So, lo and behold, she goes into the meeting for the last case, and there goes an old friend from college in there. This is where Omar Epps comes in. He is an old friend from college. Um, he is a tech consultant for the firm for right now. They're looking for emails to support their case. I don't know what the case was about. I don't know. It's just the fact that he was there. So he turns around, he sees her, they see each other. They're like, oh, hey, and they're flirting heavy. They're flirting heavy because Nia Long feels lonely and sad because her husband is going through something and she doesn't realize that she just needs to open up her mouth and ask him stuff so that she can like support him through this and then he'll get over it eventually. <laughs> and so, you know, he asked her after their meeting if he could go out with her um uh, to get drinks to catch up and she says no you know I, I i can't tonight i'm having dinner with my husband so i guess her husband cooks lord send me a cooking nigga yes god because i don't like cooking i don't have the patience for it you know cooking is an art okay you have to, i like to eat i have a very broad palate my mom took me to various different places to eat when i was younger i just don't like standing there and cook. i don't enjoy it it's not my art form <laughs> and so when they say well women have to cook and but no bitch cooking you can't just tell somebody to cook they have to enjoy cooking my mom always said if you cook angry it goes into the food if you cook nonchalantly it goes into the food so what your emotions are while you're cooking it will go into the food cooking is an art and so i need i need somebody who likes who who enjoys that art i wash the dishes and do various other things for the food <laughs> We won't go into those various other things, though. <laughs> but yeah, so she is going to dinner with him, or he's cooked for her, so she couldn't go out with Omar Epps. Um, and then the next day, I think it's the next day or whatever, he's there again, and he just wants to show the emails that he found. And so he didn't have to be there for that, <laughs> to meet with her boss and her. But he wanted to. He was so proud of himself for finding these emails. And then he asked her out again. She says no. She's going to hang out with her homegirl, Courtney. And uh, she, then she instead invite. After saying no, she instead invites him to hang out with her and her homegirl, Courtney. So maybe in her mind, she was going to hook Courtney up with, with David. That's his name in the movie. David or Daniel. One of those. These. <laughs> And, and maybe, maybe, it, that, I mean, maybe that was in her mind because in, in an earlier scene, she was walking through her workplace with Courtney and Courtney was talking about being single and, and blah, blah, blah and all this other stupid shit. But they get there and, um, well, she gets there, Ellie gets there and Courtney cancels 
at like she calls Courtney and Courtney cancels. My thing is, why couldn't why could if Courtney knew she wasn't gonna make it because she had work and stuff. If she knew she wasn't gonna make it, why didn't she cancel before? <laughs> like earlier and say oh i can't make it instead ellie had to call her but you know that's that's you know you know that's another <laughs> so ellie gets there courtney cancels and here comes daniel and they're catching up and flirting and he's talking about all this stuff and how beautiful she is and how she has an age just slobbering all over her and shit you know she's married you know she brings he keeps calling her by her maiden name and shit like that and then she has to remind him that that, that she's married and shit and so you know it's a lot of stuff that's going on but she's falling for it because she's been horny and sad and lonely because her husband has been traumatized and he needs a minute <laughs> I mean, the scar on his shit looked like his shit was cut, coming off like it oh gosh i mean i could just imagine the healing process and then he's an architect and he can't draw and and work on the construction sites and show them people what to do or whatever the fuck architects do he can't do the shit that he loves to do because when you're an architect that's one of them passion jobs <laughs> that's a passion career and he can't do his passion so you know whatever but she's sad and lonely you know thinking of herself and men do it non-binary folks do it and women do everybody does it okay <laughs> because i don't want no niggas coming over here like see look at look at what bitches no <laughs> there was a whole movie called fatal attraction <laughs> this is fatal affair there's a lot of movies where niggas fuck up and do stupid shit too so don't come for me <laughs> so anyways you know she's like reminiscing and asking and he asked her what what does she wish or some shit and she said she wished it was 20 years ago when she was young and you know so she wants to feel free and young and all this stupid shit that's temporary and stuff like that i'm scared about cheating because i feel like all the shit that people come with yeah you want to feel new and vibrant and whatever the fuck but at the end of the day people come with a lot of shit and you're not thinking about that shit you're just thinking about a quick fuck and feeling young for like uh maybe an hour or so you know and then you forget that people are a whole myriad package of things i'm scared i feel like cheating it would be scary and horrible for anybody you know honesty is the key but maybe that's just the aries in me <laughs> um so he's they go to a little club where they're playing like 90s music or there was a 90s song and then maybe another more modern song i don't fucking know and they're talking and he's like why didn't you ever go out with me and da, da, da. And she was like well i don't remember you looking this good whatever blah 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 and i'm just like young omar epps was fine this omar epps is learned and why <laughs> that's all i'm gonna say you guys and so you know they go on the dance floor they start dancing and then they almost kiss and then she stops and runs to the bathroom and is like no i can't <laughs> they're drunk and stuff and then she runs into the bathroom and he follows her in the bathroom and they almost fuck she stops him right after he pulls her panties off and right before he unzips his or right during him unzipping his pants so she stops him and she goes i can't i can't do it because you know she loves her husband she's just doing stupid shit you know and so i'm glad that she didn't go all the way and physically do anything with this nigga but how it turns out i feel like even if they had never had any physical contact at all he probably still would have found some delusional reason for what he did later on to justify his actions so she goes home and she feels bad about it and this nigga texts her he's texting her apologizing she ignores it and then there's this whole montage of her just you know rekindling her flame basically what she should have done from jump was support her husband through his sadness and then they started fucking again and everything went back to normal and she's kissing on the scar making him feel like he's a regular person and the scar doesn't matter and all this other shit which it doesn't it's just you know i'm assuming that's what it was for because he was very self-conscious about it for like most of the beginning of the movie mm -hmm. this shit looked like his shoulder damn near came off some shit like that <laughs> um so you know there's this whole montage of them getting back and rekindling and doing all this other shit which is great and then at the end of the montage this nigga david is still calling her on the phone she has a missed call from him 
So during this montage, she's also moving into her new private practice as a lawyer in the little Oceanside town. She's, you know, Estelle is there. Hey, Garnet girl, how you doing, Garnet? Yes, if y'all watch Steven Universe, I was very happy to see Estelle. <laughs> but anyways, so at the end of the montage, he calls. He's still calling her. He's crazy. And then next we see David in therapy. So he has a therapist, you know. And he is just very delusional. He's telling this therapist that he's getting past. So he, um, his ex-wife, um, his wife left him and it was a divorce. And he's getting past it and everything's great. He found somebody new. And she's just getting over, you know, an ex. So he's taking it slow. So he's made up this whole scenario in his mind. You know, he's clearly a narcissist. He's a narcissist sociopath where you know narcissists are in it for the attention the glory so add add on antisocial disorder that's what the dsm-5 diagnosis for a sociopath would be add that on and personality disorder antisocial personality disorder mixed in with narcissism he's he's doing things for the glory for the entertainment he doesn't see people as people. He has no empathy. He sees people as objects for him to move around and play with. <laughs> so if you think about, you know, some of the videos I've done in the past on other movies and shows and stuff like that, especially I May Destroy You. People like this, they just they just see people as objects, as playthings, as things to, you know, appease them because a lot of times they either feel a lack of emotions inside or they feel an insurmountable pain inside of them that they refuse to face so whenever that pain comes up they use people to shut it down so i don't want to focus on or i'm angry today so i'm going to soothe that anger by making this bitch over here think she's crazy <laughs> It's not funny, but it is. It's like, that's the mindset right there. So he's in therapy, you know, talking about Ellie as if she was not a real person. Mm -hmm. With feelings and emotions and, and wants and needs and things like that. He's talking about Ellie as if he, she were his little car. She were his car. I got a new car and, you know, it's, it's a little run down, but I'm going to fix it up. I'm fixing it up. You know, so he doesn't see, he sees her as an object. And, you know, the therapist is clocking this nigga. She knows what's up because he came there first and foremost for anger management because of the divorce from his wife because he was abusing her. <laughs> and so she's just like, you know, it's okay if <laughs> you still have problems after all the things that you've been through. Basically saying... Are you sure the relationship in your mind is what's really happening? <laughs> He's just like, why do you keep bringing this up? And da, 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 because, because, because you have a pattern of history. There's something wrong with you and you're not recognizing it. You refuse to. A lot of people don't know why these folks refuse to. Personality disorders are lifelong things. This is a the, a big deficit in how you behave and how you see the world mental health disorders come and go you recognize that you have them usually you get help for them you want to get help for them there's empathy there's sympathy there's understanding for yourself and other people usually personality disorders that's just who you are as a person <laughs> you know th that's just that's that's how you operate and there's nothing that can change that you know a lot of the times i mean a lot of the um, uh, a lot of the, um, interventions for, for, well, specifically for antisocial disorder and narcissism, because borderline is something different because depending on the type of borderline, people can heal from that. I've seen it happen. So I'm going to focus on narcissism and personality disorder. A lot of the time with that you teach with interventions for that you teach them skills to pretend that they you know care about people and are a regular human being in the world um sometimes they recognize what they have i've seen youtube videos where people with antisocial personality disorder recognize that they don't have empathy and recognize that they're different from other people and recognize that they have urges to 
maneuver and manipulate folks sometimes when they experience extreme emotions or just cause. You know, I'm bored. I don't feel anything inside and I want to feel something for a second. So I'll just manipulate the situation so I can be entertained. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm saying all this so that people can watch out for these type of people. Because <laughs> it's a horrible experience to encounter one. So, Ellie, whose daughter came back into town from college... Um, is wa- just happily walking around downtown in a little town. I guess they went out to lunch while, you know, mom was working for the day and she's saying goodbye to her. And here comes this nigga cause he, cause she hasn't answered any of his phone calls or his texts or anything. And he just comes randomly out of nowhere. She's already said goodbye to her daughter. So her daughter hasn't met him yet. <laughs> And he's just like, why haven't you answered my calls? Why haven't you answered my texts? What the fuck? Da, 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 da. And she's just like, I'm I'm married, so I because he's asking her out for coffee and then apologizing about the other night and all this other stupid shit. And she's like, No, I'm married. I'm married. I don't want any involvement in whatever the fuck you're involved in. <laughs> or you won't think we're involved in. So, you know, he's like, but why? And I like you and I care for you and da da. Whatever the fuck he said that was crazy. <laughs> crazy in that he has a disposition to continuously hurt people. And nothing will change that. No, 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 no. So then she tells him, you know, she has to go. And then she leaves. And he's just standing in a row looking mad, looking upset in the face and all this other stuff. She goes home and she's like cooking and stuff like that and this nigga's calling her still and sending her text messages and stuff like that talking about he he's still thinking about the night before and blah 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 so she blocks him and then she's standing there and she's cutting stuff up and then she she's, she cuts herself an accident her husband comes randomly out of nowhere and kisses her finger and you know all sweet and all this other shit so he seems like a sweet guy you know whatever she needs to tell him at this point <laughs> she should have told him from jump what happened so that she could have the extra protection of the person that's supposed to be her partner because at the end of the day when she did tell him he forgave her you know you got to know the type of person that you're with are you with the type of person that will sit and talk to you and explore you know what happened or are you with the type of person that you know tends to pop off at the mouth over anything you have to know the person that you're with and understand that if they haven't popped off at the mouth about other things that they've been upset that you know that have, that have hurt them based off of the relationship you're in they probably won't pop off at the mouth at you for this stupid shit they'll probably be sad and upset and get over it eventually <laughs> you know but she should have told him because this is dangerous at this point this nigga is randomly showing up randomly where she's at and it's not okay Mm-mm. so her and her husband have sex that night and there is this nigga standing outside her house watching them have sex so he's watching them he's taking pictures of them there's something wrong with him all this other stuff well he's standing outside the house looking mad upset just devastated that she would have the audacity to have sex with her husband when in the imaginary relationship he has in his mind they are together (laughs) and she's cheating on him that man over there is driving my car stole it stole my car so think of it that way that's how these type of people see people that man over there is driving my car how would you feel if you saw some random person just driving your car down the street (laughs) but we all know that people aren't cars yes Mm -hmm. people are not cars so we get to the next day and she's at her private practice with Estelle. Hey girl, hey Garnet. <laughs> and her husband comes in all nice and shit and he trying to kiss up on her and stuff. And then when he's about to leave, she goes, oh, Courtney is supposed to come over and their daughter is supposed to um, go out on some date with some little boy. So we get back to their house and their daughter's date shows up. They both look like they're 12. Um, <laughs> and her husband's stupid he's like i'm fbi agent (laughs) i guess he was trying to pull on his bad boy's hat or whatever the fuck he was trying to do and his daughter goes out on his date on her date 
and she's like trying to tell her mom that she's a college student and she's not going to be back till 12 her mom is like 11 she's like no but 12 okay <laughs> i'm like she's in college my rule if you are in college and you are my child is that don't bring no bullshit back to my house and don't end up murdered <laughs> i've taught you well i've taught you long enough don't bring no bullshit don't fuck under my roof i don't care don't bring no niggas back to my house no bitches no others whatever the fuck none binaries whatever though <laughs> you're not no i don't want go find another place to do your do at don't bring that shit under my roof <laughs> you know so you maybe i am a tad bit old-fashioned but i believe the children should not be having sex underneath the parents roof <laughs> that's just me <laughs> but anyways so not I guess not with the parent knowing because I did some shit when I was in high school they never found out though but I still felt bad inside like this place is sacred and I'm doing this in my family's home <laughs> so I feel like you know since I felt bad there's something to it <laughs> anyways um uh, daughter goes out on the date with the little the little 12 year olds go do the, the date stuff and here comes Courtney and behind Courtney, Courtney's talking about, I hope you don't mind a plus one. And behind Courtney is this nigga here. This nigga, David. This nigga has infiltrated into her friend's life. And she's just looking at this nigga like, what the fuck? And he's introducing himself like they've never met before. This is all new for everybody and all this other stuff. And she's just like, what the fuck is this nigga? <laughs> so she's scared. She's hyperventilating, all sorts of shit. Mm-hmm. And then she goes and they're eating and he's talking about his ex-wife and how she left him and all this other shit. And he says some shit that um, Nia said when they first met. So when they first met at the at the little club thing when they were talking before they went to the or no, when they were at the bar. Because they, they were at the bar that they met at. Then they went to a little club. So when they were at the bar and um, uh, what's her name in the movie? Elsie? She said that Ellie, there you go. <laughs> she said that the reason, because he was asking if there was trouble in paradise in her mis- marriage, and she and he and she was like, "Oh, you know, it's not trouble. I have the perfect life, the perfect marriage, blah blah blah." But it's just I feel like I've been waking up to a stranger. Like after twenty years, how do you wake up to a stranger? And I'm like, "Bitch, this nigga went through trauma." he went through some shit he's not gonna be the same nigga you still supposed to support this nigga as long as he's supporting himself you know as long as he's working on himself too you're still supposed to support him you know he's going to therapy he's doing the things to heal and get his life together and shit like that you support him through that but she's talking about oh i feel like i'm waking up next to a stranger and that's what set this nigga all talking about oh you're waking up next to a stranger you shouldn't have to feel that way and blah 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 and when he met her with his, with when she was with her daughter that's the shit she uh he was saying too you shouldn't have to feel like you're waking up next to a stranger and blah blah blah. i mean she said it offhandedly she, they were having a moment people have moments, but he doesn't see her as a human being that's his car you shouldn't have to live with this dent on you i'm gonna get this dent <laughs> so they're at the they're at the little lunch thing with courtney and him and he and he's talking about his ex and he and marcus uh elsie ellie's uh husband is talking about oh well what happened with you and your ex and blah, blah, blah. and he goes oh well i felt like you know i just kept waking up to a stranger so he's the same thing she says some crazy people shit like what and she's just looking at him like and she starts tearing up because he's fucking with her he's he's infiltrating her life he's fucking with her her people he's fucking with her emotions just because he thinks he owns her like in his mind he feels like he owns this person like this person doesn't have any feelings or emotions he feels like he can force this dent out of this car you know he's not gonna take it to a mechanic you know he's gonna he's gonna do it himself and fuck his car up even <laughs> so ellie goes into the kitchen to get dessert and she tries to call courtney in and then this nigga gonna say no you know i'll go instead i'll go get dessert for you and i'm just like what well, i would think it was suspicious that my nigga wanted to go in the kitchen with my friend to get dessert like why do you need to go in there with her that's my friend that's not your friend <laughs> she doesn't know you they don't know you so why why would you need to go in there with <laughs> 
but you know he goes in there with her and she reads this nigga she's like you need to leave you need to never come back get the fuck out of my house you need to get from around my people figure it the fuck out nigga so he's just standing there like she's all like you need to go out there and make an excuse to leave you need to you need to get the fuck out of my house so he's just standing looking all mad and fucked up in the face and then he goes out and says oh a client called and i need to leave and Courtney's all like, well, I'll go with you. And the, and um, Ellie's all like, no, no, I'll take you home, Courtney. And Courtney just looks at her like, bitch, you better, you better, you better. <laughs> and then she goes with this nigga. <laughs> she goes with this nigga. So Ellie is finally thinking this shit is over. She told this nigga to stay the fuck away from her. She told this nigga what was up. And then I'm thinking it's the next day or something. She finds this album on her patio i think it's some shit they listen to in college um forget me not forget me not and some 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 remember remember <laughs> and um i guess he feels in his delusional mind that it is their song so she's just looking at it. i'm like what the fuck and so then she calls him up i'm assuming and they go out to lunch and he's all like oh she's telling him to leave her alone and he goes oh i know what you mean you want us to be discreet like my nigga you heard what she said why do you keep making shit up in your head <laughs> why do you keep why do you keep why do you keep making shit up <laughs> like you can't hear is it gaslighting is it is it you know a mental health disorder on top of personality disorder like what is it is this a psychosis on top of where you got delusions and shit delusions of grandeur and some bullshit that you actually believe like what the fuck is it because you can have a personality disorder which is just who you are as a person and then have like a mental health disorder on top of it you know so have depression like a narcissist can have depression they feel a little bit more guilt a little bit more empathy um you can have psychosis on top of like uh narcissistic personality disorder mixed with uh antisocial personality disorder you can have psychosis on top of it you know shit mixes together. everything is a spectrum bitch <laughs> so i'm just sitting there like is he gaslighting is he is he is he does he got some shit on top of this personality disorder like what the fuck is wrong why is he not hearing and she's just sitting there like no i don't want us to be discreet what the fuck are you talking about and and so he's like he's like trying to talk to her and tell her he's sorry and tell her how beautiful she is and tell her that he wants to be with her all sorts of stupid shit and she's just like you need to leave me the fuck alone i don't never want to see you again i don't want to do nothing with you at all like I, even if she was single she probably wouldn't want to fuck with this nigga she didn't in college she she was on um, marcus's dick she didn't want to fuck with this nigga even in college so there must have been a reason i feel like there was a reason maybe he showed signs of his craziness when she was when they were in college too you know some some stalkerish some overly eager type shit who knows mm-hmm so he just he just pops off at the mouth and then he just goes shut up deborah and that's his ex's name so then she looks at him and she realizes that he has some mental issues there's something going on there there's some there's some stuff in his brain that's telling him things that are not the truth <laughs> And he believes them and then uses it to hurt people. <laughs> you know, he's making things up, whatever. She, so she starts talking to him slowly and was just like, you know, it's not college no more. We were great friends back then, but we, we can't, we can't no more. Whatever the fuck she said. I don't remember what she said. <laughs> and then she puts her shades on so she had her shades on and then she gets up and leaves and then he's just sitting there with she gives him the record back send it forget me not did it. <laughs> and then when she gets up and leaves and walks away he like breaks the record you know he, he was sitting there looking all dumb 
found it in the face like when when she asked him who deborah was so he was just after that he didn't say nothing else and so she that's when she started talking slowly to him like no we can't do the thing because no and then she gets up and leaves and he breaks the record so then she goes home to her husband at this point you you need to tell him you should you should let him know Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but no instead she sits on his lap and begins to cry you know these things are escalating that means there's a pattern here that means this is gonna go you haven't seen his edge yet and his edge may involve people getting hurt so you need to tell the people that you care but regardless of the consequence to your relationship he's showing signs of possible danger and that danger could lead to danger to you and your people and so at this point it's like i'd rather risk my husband divorcing me versus this nigga getting crazy enough to kill people no no this is the next day and she's go she's at her office and courtney shows up and courtney is big mad she talking about oh he told me about you he told me that you tried to fuck him at the club and he told me that you started screaming at him at the um at the um when you went to lunch with him to tell to tell him shit and he told me that you trying to fuck him and, da -da -da -da, and all this stuff that she's believing off of knowing this nigga for like maybe a week <laughs> this is your friend you know for years but but you know whatever we all do it i've done it so it's okay <laughs> so anyways um ellie's just looking at her like wait a minute this nigga said because at the at the little lunch they had with um with courtney and and david and whatever he just showed up and shit um he said when when marcus asked him what he did he said that he you know did tech stuff and he was a hacker basically that's what he said he was all proud of it and shit i'm a hacker fucking narcissist i'm a hacker oh stupid shit and marcus just like oh well let me know about it you know i know people in the tech world and then he's asking like is that shit that you're doing legal like he's looking all side eye at him a little bit so back to courtney showing up in um uh talking shit to ellie so she shows up and uh, you know ellie's just looking at her like this nigga that just told both of us he was a hacker you gonna believe the text messages weren't doctored so he's showing her text messages making the text messages look like uh ellie was like trying to get with him and trying to find out where he was and all this other shit and i'm just like there's apps that can do that you can do that on a, a website i think you know sometimes when we get our backs blown out and we hella lonely we just believe everything <laughs> it's like at least i'm not by myself bitch so you gotta you love yourself because predators see that shit just smell it on you just smell it it's pheromones and shit and they just attach themselves and take advantage of you for their own pleasure for whatever they want you for so he wants her to get back at ellie that's all he wants her for but she don't know that courtney don't know that so courtney believes him and courtney's mad and she walks out and ellie's just looking at her like for real for, bitch we've been friends for real <laughs> you've known this nigga like a week you met him at the elevator he just walked up on you and shit like this nigga was probably watching you for like a couple days before he walked he knew who he knew who you was before you knew him speaking of he said that at the club too he said that he had he had he knew ellie worked at that firm and he 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 wanted to be there purposely because he knew that she that would have been a red flag for me but you know what you know what she was going through shit and she wanted to believe what she wanted to believe at the moment so whatever so then ellie start looking into this nigga she won't talk to her husband but she's doing all this extra dextra shit and trying to find out about this nigga and i just feel like what you need to find out he's shown you that he has some issues that are dangerous to you and yours that's all you need to know you don't need to know you don't need to look into this nigga's history you know maybe you found out what he was capable of but you would have found out eventually if you kept fucking with him and acting like you 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 just captain avenger doing this shit by your damn self no bitch no but she going to old friends from college and asking about him and this old friend is talking about his ex-wife who died 
and she didn't know her his ex-wife died and the old friend was all like oh she looked just like you that bitch in that first scene did not look like Nia Long not no not even a smidge not even a, mm. you could have found somebody that looked like Nia Long but she didn't but then you purposely said in this movie that the bitch looked like her no she did not I don't give a fuck not the eyes not the nose not the lips cheeks bone structure none of it none of it looked like Nia Long maybe the haircut was like you know 90s early 2000 late 90s early 2000 knee along haircut you know so i'm giving her I don't give a fuck say what i said she's talking about oh he married his wife looked just like you and he was obsessed with you in college and he was this 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 and that and you and ellie was just like really he was obsessed with me and um the friend was like oh well, you only had eyes for marcus so she know marcus since college too you only had eyes for marcus marcus kind of tall and you know he looked like he buff and shit like that a little bit he all right and so she was shocked when she found out his wife died she connected knots and stuff because it because his the friend said um um his wife died and it looked like a burglary and bullshit that nigga killed her killed the boyfriend all this other shit so she started following this thing around heavy and while she's doing this she's calling courtney texting courtney trying to talk to courtney courtney's not responding courtney is purposely not responding however because you know she's mad i'm thinking courtney's hurt courtney's dead or something no she's just mad <laughs> i'm like okay courtney and so she following this thing around heavy and she follows him and this nigga is has infiltrated her husband <laughs> and is playing golf with him and she's just sitting there like what the fuck <laughs> so her husband so this is why i said earlier tell somebody what's going on stop sitting here acting like you by yourself and shit use your fucking words regardless of the consequence is better than the consequence that this nigga is about to bring into your life he's trying to kill everybody you love <laughs> it doesn't have to get to that point it doesn't um so she's feeling the type of way and he cuts this nigga playing golf with her husband and he's talking about how he's so lucky to have her as his wife and all this other stuff and this nigga's like oh yeah she's great i love her like he loves his wife and all this other so that's nice <laughs> and this nigga so they're putting their golf clubs away and this nigga is slowly walking up on him holding the golf club like this and then i guess he's mumbling under his breath because because her husband act like he didn't hear what the fuck he was saying but he was like it's just you're just so lucky to you know you don't know what it feels like to have another man touching your woman and being with your woman <laughs> it's like replace a woman with car you just don't know what it feels like to have someone else driving your car <laughs> and touching your car and, and doing things with your car <laughs> that's that's what it's like in their minds that's what they don't they're not a person you're a car you don't make your own decisions i make decisions for you okay if you if you break down i fix you i pay for you and shit okay you're my car <laughs> so he's coming up behind him they saying this shit under his breath and it looks like he about to hit him in the back of the head and then the dude instead puts the thing in the in the bag so he doesn't he doesn't hit him he doesn't kill him out on the golf course where there's video cameras and people that can see and all this, this stupid shit so then nia starts following him heavy she want to know what's going on why is he in her life why is he doing the things he's doing and i'm just like why do you need to know why all you need to do is see what he's doing and act on it okay tell people call the police <laughs> so she sneaks into his apartment and i feel like if i ever live in an apartment with a front desk co and some random bitch comes up and is like oh or some random niggas comes up and is like oh well you know we fucked last night and i left my shit in her apartment so let me i need a key to go get it and the bitch was like oh yeah yeah I, we've all had those nights girl and gives her the key to this niggas home i would i would shut everything now i'd be like so you let a stranger into my home you let you let a stranger into that's what you did that's what you did okay well it's good to know you let a stranger into my home i'm suing everybody 
But anyway, she gets the key. She goes upstairs. She's looking through his computer. He got pictures of his ex-wife fucking her boyfriend. She got pictures of Ellie fucking her husband. She got pictures of Ellie walking around with her daughter. That's her child. Like, the fuck? And Ellie's just like, oh my gosh. Oh my god. Oh. And all of a sudden, door opens. He's coming back. And so she hides, like, behind the counter. And then she sneaks out and calls, um, what's her name? What's her name? What's her name? Courtney. She calls Courtney and tells Courtney like this, nigga. Wait, 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 wait. No, first, before she sneaks out, he's on the phone with Courtney. Courtney calls him and it's like, come over, bae. And he's like, okay, bae. And she like, bring food, bae. And he like, oh yeah, I'm gonna bring food, bae. <laughs> And so he leaves and then she sneaks out and then she calls Courtney before he gets there and she actually picks up this time and she tells Courtney like bitch this nigga's crazy bitch he got pictures of me on his computer bitch so Courtney believes her this time she happens to believe her this time you know and then after she hangs up the phone this nigga walks to her door like does he have a key did she leave the door unlocked I just feel the type of way that he can just walk nigga you know for a week feels like he can just just freely walk in and out of your home <laughs> but you know you know our minds go different places when we are lonely and sad and we do stupid shit <laughs> hopefully she's learned or i would hope so and so courtney is low-key believing ellie this time i'm just like what's different about this time versus last time she said there's pictures you could you could just as easily not believe her about the pictures as you easily not believed her about this nigga lying the last time <laughs> But she kind of believes her. So this nigga walks in, he kisses her, and then he goes into the other room and leaves his phone on the counter. No, he walks in and he asks her who she was talking to because he heard her down the hallway. So I'm thinking he hacked into her fucking phone and every time it rings, he can hear what she says because it's like, do you hear people outside, you know, down the hall? That's stupid. <laughs> so he goes, So he goes into the other room and then Courtney looks at his phone and oh wait a minute there was one scene i missed so at some point before all this happens um he sneaks into her house and he smells her underwear he smells ellie's underwear and then the kid um ellie's kid comes home late you know and i think it was after the day after the same day that he went with courtney to um eat with them and so he sneaks into her house, smells her underwear, <laughs> takes a piece of her wig, a strand of her wig on her head that she's sleeping in. And he about to leave the house and then her kid comes in and then he picks up a knife. See, this is how much they don't see other people as people. Because it's like you picking up a knife, if she had saw you, you were going to stab her. You were going to kill her only child. That's what you were going to do. You were prepared to kill her only child. You didn't give a fuck you don't care about this woman at all not even in the slightest no but you know the girl didn't do it she didn't look around the corner or whatever so she just walked away got her popcorn and left so he put the knife down he left and then in a neck in another scene he's with courtney and basically what he does is he has courtney put on this bitch's underwear lingerie whatever and then he like hate fucks her He's like, tell me you love me. Tell me you've loved me all this time. You do like a fucking emotional bitch. And you know, he like, hey, and Courtney is just falling for it. She thinks she thinks he's just being aggressive. And he's like choking her and all this other stupid shit. He just, she just thinks he's being aggressive. All this shit. So you know, he obviously has these deep seated issues where he like sees people as objects and things to manipulate and he needs to have little souvenirs to remind him of his little toys he had you know like like when people total their car and if they really like the car they'll take like you know the light from the car or the license plate from the car <laughs> shit like that yes so we get back to Courtney figuring it out. She's figuring it out. She she picks up his phone on the counter. And he has pictures. I think it's a picture of Ellie and her husband having sex on the phone. 
and she, he's right behind her so he knows what she did and he's like why are you looking on my phone i don't like da, 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 da. and she's like oh well why do you have pictures of ellie on your phone these look recent and he's like oh well you know her boss wanted me to check her out wanted to know why you know say some bullshit stuff why she left the firm and all this other stuff why would her boss want you to do anything that involves ellie and her job you were just a consultant for one thing one fucking thing so you know um courtney tried to play it off but he can tell she she knows what's up and then he bashes her in her head and leaves and then ellie goes to courtney's house so she was already on the way to courtney's house because courtney had hung up the phone and she you know she was worried that something bad was gonna happen to courtney so she was already on the way to courtney's house and so ellie goes upstairs sees courtney on the floor and finally she tells her fucking husband what's going on so she calls the police because courtney's on the floor so courtney's just unconscious and then she calls her husband to come get her and finally she tells this nigga what happened and this nigga's mad he's like you i was he drank my beer <laughs> i went golfing with this thing <laughs> and he was low-key mad but it was like you know he forgave her because they they didn't actually have sex i'm just like you didn't actually have sex with this nigga you didn't even actually have an emotional relationship with this nigga you just did some stupid shit because you were lonely and then her husband's like is it was it that difficult to talk to me to express how you feel and she was just like i just didn't feel i just didn't know how to talk to you because why because he was quiet for a little bit because he was a little bit sad because his shoulder almost got chopped off girl open your fucking mouth and ask him what the fuck is wrong <laughs> and he goes justifiably he says oh well you can talk to a jury of 12 people but you can't talk to me and she just doesn't know what the fuck to say and i'm just like you can ask him what was wrong maybe it's aries in me i would have told him the same night i would just be like you know so this is what happened but then i wouldn't have met up with that nigga you know because obviously there was a reason that you didn't date him in college the nigga was always around but there was a reason you didn't date him come on girl don't do that so this nigga david then goes and torches a homeless person poor man was laying on the beach doing his little thing minding his fucking business this nigga puts his clothes on him and torches him and then puts a suicide letter next to him and then that because the police are looking for him they know he hit hit that girl in the head <laughs> and so then you know he basically fakes his death the police are like oh he's dead now and then girl goes on and lives her life and she feels like everything is great and wonderful and magical look at the patterns of what people do if you know a person to be manipulative to be grandiose to be angry to want to mess with people's lives never known them to try to attempt suicide or do anything like that what is the pattern here do you think that this person is really dead do you think do you think do you think he's dead do you think <laughs> But yeah, she goes on to live her life. She feels like everything's perfect now and wonderful and magical and all this other shit. And then all of a sudden it's Thanksgiving. Marcus and his daughter and her little boyfriend are basing a turkey and shit like that. And then Ellie gets a phone call from the office from Estelle. And Estelle is telling her that she needs to sign some paperwork or some shit like that. She, I think it was like a um, text from the office or some shit. So she goes to the office and there's Estelle on the floor dead and then she gets a text from an unknown number saying oh you left them alone so now she realizes that this nigga is not dead <laughs> I don't know that nigga was dead I mean I watch a lot of true crime shit because you know mental health and shit like that and so I would have known that nigga wasn't dead I would have I would have been like are you sure he's dead let's wait for the dna from the body to come back yeah it may take a while because it's the body the accelerant or whatever caused whatever to happen where the, that's what they said in the movie i don't know if that's true in real life i feel like if you take a piece of char from a, from <laughs> shut up oh my gosh what's wrong with me i'm just saying if you take a bone fragment some 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 uh, what is this shit on the inside of the bone that people use the bone marrow and you put that under a microscope whatever they do to figure out dna it shouldn't be as hard as you know finding dna for anything else but you know whatever <laughs> but she believed that nigga was dead and so she goes back to her house you know um the, the little girl's boyfriend is dead so he kills the little girl's boyfriend but didn't kill her husband or her child 
I mean, you know, he has a modicum of of empathy. I don't fucking know. He just ties up her husband and child, and then you know, she tries to beat him. He beat her husband ass. <laughs> so she um she un she does, oh she hits him in the head with a vase, and he's knocked out. So then she goes and unties her husband and child, and they trying to leave. She they already got the cops. She called the cops while she was on the way to the house. She trying to leave, and then they get outside. This nigga killed the cop. She in the car trying to be on the walkie-talkie trying to call i'm like why are you in the cop's car on the walkie-talkie what if that nigga's still in the car i'm like why don't you just go with your husband and child get in their car and leave that way you can just call the police on your cell phone and say whatever you know maybe it's it's the heat of the moment you're not thinking <laughs> anyways this thing is in front of the cop car and then he grabs her from behind here come her husband trying to save her this nigga beats his <laughs> i was just like does he practice judo like what exactly i'm gonna have another glass of wine this is kind of sweet i like this and it's blue and blue is like my favorite color so i'm gonna have another glass I'm gonna hopefully this doesn't fall on the floor because that would be horrible well just stop it stop it well, stop it you stop it I know. Nobody do shit to you. Not a damn thing. Just put your shit on the floor. I'm wrong with you. <laughs> so anyways, he beat her hit her husband's ass. I don't know if he knows judo, martial arts, whatever. Stop. But he beat her. Then they ended up on a cliff. He had a gun. Her husband came out of nowhere and started beating his ass. But he beat her husband's ass again. And all of a sudden, he ends up hanging off the edge of the cliff and uh, you know she's trying to save his life <laughs> she's trying to save him she's like he's like hanging off the edge of the cliff and she's trying to save him sometimes you just got to do like in the good son <laughs> when you know that they can't be helped and it's just going to cause more issues you got to let you got to let you sometimes you just got got to let it go and he fell off that i mean she didn't let him go he fell off the side of the cliff she couldn't hold on to him but it was two of them her husband grabbed her and held on to her he didn't grab that nigga he said fuck that nigga <laughs> so he fell off the fucking cliff and um who was that it was at the end oh then they decided to move <laughs> i would not have moved i would not have that was a nice ass house that was land property that nigga's dead i mean i guess they were traumatized i mean they got enough money to buy a house one week and then move the next week <laughs> sell it the next week and shit i don't know mm -mm. put a bed and breakfast that motherfucker out that's the fucking beach home <laughs> you got me fucked up okay i'll traumatize but unless unless it was ghost in that bitch or a serial killer came up in that motherfucker and killed people and it was dead bodies and blood everywhere. I'm not giving up that fucking house. <laughs> She's all like, I'm not, I'm excited to go back to the city. I can't wait. Fuck that shit. Y'all was on the beach side. I wouldn't have sold the house. That's just me. But yeah, that was the end of the movie. Their daughter goes back to Berkeley and that was the end. Stay away from abusive sociopathic narcissistic manipulative motherfuckers notice the signs understand that you know if you are seeing the same thing happening over and over again gaslighting always feeling crazy feeling like you gotta walk on eggshells feeling like there's always something wrong with you or you're always doing something to cause problems in the relationship and that your partner never does anything they're just innocent that's not how life works okay that's not how life works either you know you're in a, an abusive relationship or you're both equally contributing to the problem of the relationship there's no like oh well you know I'm always causing problems and stuff, even though, because he says so, she says so, they say so, you know, but they never do anything wrong. Really? That's what? No, that doesn't, it doesn't happen that way. You know, it's, it takes two to tango, even if your part is maybe just staying but then if you're in danger, it's like, you got to do what you have to do. So I can't even be mad about that. So 
just notice the signs that's all i can say as far as how the survivor the victim the survivor can gain control is to notice the signs and set boundaries and then cra uh, crazy people that want to hurt other people stop hurting other people recognize and understand why you have this need to hurt other people and then work on it take responsibility for your actions embrace the pain that you feel inside and learn to let it go instead of running away from it all the time and then if you don't feel nothing inside go to therapy and learn some skills to you know pretend at least you know if you feel like there there's nothing in there emotionally wise and you just need to manipulate and do stuff to feel things go to therapy learn some skills because the consequences of you doing things to hurt people should outweigh you know the need to hurt people that's all i'm saying you know because eventually you're gonna get caught look at look at look at the golden state killer he got caught eventually he old he could have been retired he could have been living a good life somewhere doing some shit that nigga is in <laughs> and it's like you at, at at the stage of your life where your body hurts the most you're laying on some cot in a prison cell that smells like shit <laughs> you know you know it's like you didn't have to you didn't have to you know so stop hurting people <laughs> and set boundaries and like i said this was an okay movie i hope you enjoyed this review i hope you have a good rest of your week and weekend and later days <laughs>